Hello, welcome to Web of Stories. My name is Melinda. I'm gonna apologize right now. This is gonna be a long video. I am here with my September 2023 book haul and I bought too many books again. I will say it is, I think, slightly smaller than my August book haul. So I, in baby steps, I don't know. Um, but yeah. Uh, so let's go through it. Um, I'm gonna, I've kind of grouped these again, together again and I've taken the time to actually stack them. So hopefully this time I don't forget any. Um, and I'm gonna start with the books that I do not have physical copies of. So the first one is The Werewolf by Alma Katsu. This is actually a Kindle single. Um, it's a short story that she wrote. Um, I read this already and it's in one of my short story updates, but it's basically using fairy tales, the form of fairy tales set during World War II to talk about radicalization. Um, and Alma Katsu wrote it in response to January 6th. Excellent, highly recommend it. You can get it on Kindle and you can get it on Audible, but unfortunately those are the only two places you can get it. The next two I have are my audiobooks. Um, I have both a Libro and an Audible account, and I know that's excessive considering I don't even listen. I mean, it takes me a long time to get through an audiobook. I just finished Tom Lake last night. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, but I have both because as much as I don't like Audible, they have stuff on Audible I can't get on Libro. But anyway. On Audible, I got None of This is True by Lisa Jewell. I actually had this audiobook out from the library, but I realized that it was still going to take me too long to finish Tom Lake, and I had this Audible credit. So I just went, returned my library copy, and got this copy. I am looking forward to reading this one, or listening to this one. Um, Thrillerish, those are kind of books that work well on audio for me. Um, this has a full cast, and I believe if I haven't mixed up my Lisa Jewel books, which is completely possible, this has like a podcast element and that works really well in an, in an audio format. So I am looking forward to this and I may start it soon. Um, I'm behind because I've been listening to, to my audiobook. I'm behind on my podcast. So I'm taking until October 1st. I'm filming this on the 28th of September. I'm taking to October 1st to kind of catch up a little bit on my podcast and then I'll start another audiobook on October 1st. And I think I'm gonna start with uh, None of This Is True. And then um, I got from Libro, I got uh, Lying to Kill by Anthony Horowitz, which is like the third or fourth something in his Hawthorne and Horowitz um, series. I listened to the first one on audio, really enjoyed it. That's a great way of doing it. It's a fun series. Um, they work really well when I'm walking or working out. So adding that one to the library. I still have to read the, the ones that come before this one. So it's going to be a while before I get to this. And then finally, um, I did a, a, I don't do this very often, but I had a pre-order of a book from Kobo and that's the fourth Thursday Murder Club book, which is The Last Devil to Die. And I felt that I needed to pre-order this because I just could not wait to read it. And I could not wait for a library hold to come in. Have I read it? Nope, nope, have not read it. So yeah, I'm gonna keep that in mind for the next time I think that I absolutely have to order one. <laughs> Unless it's by Louise Penny or William Ken Kruger, it's probably not gonna get read right away. But anyway, um, and William Kent Kruger, well, his Cork O'Connor ones I'd get on Kobo, but his standalones I'd buy in print. Um, last of all, I, I am going to read it by the end of October. I'm making that promise to myself because I did pre-order this. So those are the books I don't have in physical form. So the rest of the books I have kind of grouped on where I got them. And I'm going to start first with my books that I got from Blackwell's. This is sort of a combination of orders. I did an order and then I also had a pre-order that came in. So these didn't all come in at once. The first one I have here, and I will probably read this in November for nonfiction November, is Mortal Monarchs, 1000 Years of Royal Deaths by Susie Edge. So I follow Susie Edge on TikTok. She, uh, you, she, she is a doctor. She worked past tense as a doctor, but she got go, so into history that she went back to school, got a degree in history, and now she writes gross medical history stuff. <laughs> And I'm all here for some gross medical history stuff. I'm sure this will be very gory. Um, her videos are very gory. She always starts them with, well, she frequently starts them with, let's dig up another body, shall we? So, and then she talks about how they die in detail. So I'm looking forward to this one. Not in print in the US. Um, that's why I had to get it from Blackwell's, but I really like her TikTok. She has another book coming out, like, imminently. Um, called Vital Organs, which I may also order. I haven't yet, but I may. We'll see how this one goes, and then I may order that from Blackwell's as well. And then um, in the same order, I get the Housewade 
from Frida McFadden. I am having some trouble finding Frida McFadden books in the US except on Amazon. I don't like to buy books from Amazon. So I bought it cheaper <laughs> from Blackwell's. I have never read Frida McFadden, but I have heard really good things about her. So I thought I'm gonna give her a try. And then the next one is one that I had pre-ordered and I can't really remember how it got on my list, but it looks really interesting and it may end up being on my October list, even though I've already set that, I might add this. And that is The Witches of Vardo by Anya Bergman. And um, I read a book by, what was it? The, I'll have to look it up. I read it in my um, library book club last year. I'll put the title down here and the author. Honestly, I can see the cover of the book. I cannot remember the title or the author, but it deals with the same thing. And this is the uh, witch hunt in Vardo, Norway. Um, gosh, what is it? I can't remember something. She, same person who wrote The Dance Trees. It's gone, it's gone, out of my head. I'll look it up and put it down here. But this is by the, this is about the same event. So um, I'm all about that. We'll look into this. And then I had, because September was my birthday month, um, I actually, wait, never mind. I'm not there yet. <laughs> I jumped ahead of time. Now we're gonna talk about what I got from bookshop.org. This is over various orders. I need to not go to bookshop so often. The first is a pre-order, and I pre-ordered this quite a long time ago. I am looking forward to reading it. Haven't read it yet. And that is Happiness Falls by Angie Kim. The reason I haven't read this yet is it came out the same day as The River We Remember, which I did read right away. This is also a literary mystery, and I wanted some space between the two. So I did kind of intentionally kind of put this down on the pile, but I do hope to be getting to this one soon. Speaking of The River We Remember, this is the second of two, is that right? Yeah, of two books on this list I have actually read, and that is The River We Remember. I did a standalone video of this. Five, this is my fourth five-star book of the year. Loved it. It's my favorite of William Kent Krieger's standalones, all of which got five stars. So this is the most five-starry of them all. It was excellent. And then, um, as I said, I am going to do Victober this year, but I'm only going to do the group read because I really want to get into spooky season. So I got this, this brick here, The Way We Live Now by Anthony Trollope. I got that from bookshop.org. And I have, oops, this book, which I think is like a, a mystery set during, a historical mystery set during the Reconstruction era in Virginia called Veil of Doubt. This was a pre-order by Sharon Vertz. So yeah, this is a, this is another book that I have coming, which hopefully I will get to soon. Okay, I gotta rearrange my piles here because they're getting big. I hope nothing falls over. And then, is this my last one? Nope, this is not my last one, but we're getting there. This is Between Summer's Longing and Winter's End. I ordered this because my library only had an audio version of it. And I wanted to do a, a, group, a buddy read with Jennifer at Jennifer Loves Books, and I had to back order this. Jennifer, I have this book in. Let me know when you want to do a buddy read. I am ready to go. But this is um, by Leif G.W. Person. This is supposed to be like one of the great not Nordic Moors. So that one, that finally came in. And I had actually forgotten about it and I had to like think, why do I have this book? And then I remembered, oh yes, I was gonna do Buddy Read. So finally, from bookshop.org is another book that I have talked about and I do highly recommend based on only the first story so far, which is Never Whistle at Night. This is a collection of horror short stories by indigenous authors. The first story is amazing. It includes authors, well, the foreword's written by Stephen Graham Jones and includes authors you may have heard of, including da, 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 Rebecca Rowanhorse, Nick Medina, Sherry Dimoline, Brandon Hobson. I'm just going through the ones that, Kelly Jo Ford that stick out to me. There's other ones in here too. Um, Mona Susan Power. Morgan Talty, David Heska Wandley Wyden, Tommy Orange, Darcy Little Badger, and Wabasheg Rice all have, among others, have stories in here. The first story that I read in here, which was Kashtuka, was written, was this, it's, God, this is the first time I think the author's been published. Her name was Matilda Zelder, Zellner. She needs to get a book deal because that book was awesome. That story was awesome. Okay. Then, oh, I had one more from bookshop.org. This was a pre-order. I forgot about this one. This one just came in yesterday. And this is Anangoka. This is set um, 1804 in Upper Canada. And it's about the settlers and the Chippewa. I don't know much about it, but it sounded interesting. So I have this one. 
Okay, I'm back. That weird jump is because um, the pediatrician's office called to remind me to make an appointment for my son to go in for his 13, 13 year old well checkup. He's going to be 13 in next week. Yikes. Okay, so let me get back to my spreadsheet here. I had to jump over to my calendar. Sorry about that. <laughs> so I just talked about Angoka. Um, okay, now we have my book of the month books. Because September was my birthday month, I actually got a free add-on, so I got two months. I try not to do add-ons on there. Um, and if I do an add-on, I usually pay for them instead of using a credit just so, you know, it's still a year between. But um, I try not to do them, but this year, because this month, because it was free, I did. And the first one I got was um, Evil Eye by Edith Rum. I liked her first book, A Woman Is No Man. We read that, oops, we read that in my marginalized authors group. Really good discussion, so I am looking forward to this one. And then my second choice was The Vaster Wilds by Lauren Groff. I am a little antsy about this one. The only Lauren Groff I've read was Fates and Furies, and I hated it. Hated that book with a passion. But the subject of this one, just this is about, this is set in um, colonial America in a servant's running way, and I'm really interested. It's not that long. I've been meaning to give Matrix a try. This one actually is more of an appealing subject. So I thought I'm gonna try this one before I try Matrix. If I don't like this one, then I'm just gonna give up on Lauren Groff. <laughs> But yes, so we'll see how this one goes. Okay, and then I have two books that I picked up at my little library used bookstore. At the end of October, I think, yes, the end of October, beginning of November, they have their big use sale. So yeah, October's video might be long as well. Um, the first one is The Blue Diary by Alice Hoffman. I have not read this Alice Hoffman, so I picked it up. Paid a whopping $3 for it. And then... Um, I have Unsheltered by Barbara Kingsolver, paid, I think, $4 for this one. Um, both Alice Hoffman and Barbara Kingsolver are authors um, who have a long backlist that I have not read yet. And Alice Hoffman is a favorite author of mine. I am, I have been keeping up. I've read her Practical Magic series. Um, uh, the World, that we, I've read some of her other books, The World We Make, The World We Knew, that was really good. Um, I'm one of the few people who actually liked The Invisible Hour because that book was written for me. I totally understand why other people don't like it. I do, I understand it. And I kind of like the book despite its issues, but I do feel like that book was written for me personally. But I'm one of the few people who liked it and I gave it four stars. But um, I've only actually read one Barbara Kingsolver book, but I have a few. Um, I read her first one, which was The Bean Trees. And I do have like Demon Copperhead and all that. They're on the shelf waiting for their number to come up. Um, but uh, I wasn't going to pass up a $4 copy. Oh, and then I have the one book I pulled off a little free library this month. Um, there's really only one little free library that I go to regularly. And I go once a week. I drop one book off after I take my son to his coding class because it's on the way home. And um, that book... That particular little free library is in a park. And so it has a lot of traffic. You know, usually it's very rare that I put a book in and it's still there the next week. So there's usually a completely new selection every time. And sometimes it's a little more picked over than usual. And sometimes I luck out and um, I got Icy Sparks. I have heard about this book. Um, I've never read it. Picked it up. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. And then finally, we have my books from Powell's, which... Um, we go to Powell's once a month. Well, we have our monthly, I call it our monthly Powell's trip. My kids call it our monthly ice cream trip, but we have to put up with mom at the bookstore first trip. So here we go. I have The Uncommon Reader by Alan Bennett. I have been, this is very short. If I were doing like short books, 30, 30 books in 30 days, this would be a book I would do. Um, <laughs> but I have like meant, I've been trying to like get this from the library and every time my hold comes in, it's at a time when I can't read it. So I saw this and I said, gosh darn it, I'm just gonna buy it and have it there. Then I have, and I've been very curious about this one, but this is The Body by Stephen King. Again, another short book. I have seen Stand By Me, um, but I have never read the book, the, the body that it was based on. And Stephen King is a is an author that I probably admire more than I enjoy. Not to say that I think he's a bad writer. I do think he has a very distinctive style. Um, a big swath of his books are books that I don't feel I can read because I get scared. And I'm not someone who gets scared in books and I get scared in his books. Scared to the point that I can't sleep. So I don't read his horror. Um, his non-horror stuff is like his psychological stuff is fantastic. Misery, fantastic book. Um, but this, uh, 
this one should be fine. I don't think it's actually horror. I mean, I've seen the movie. I know what happens. Um, I, I do think sometimes that his, his distinctive voice doesn't work especially well. For example, The Green Mile, which is a fantastic story. Fantastic story. I think it's a great movie. Um, the story, it's good. But Stephen King is a guy from Maine, and he sounds like a guy from Maine. And reading a book set in the South, it just didn't work for me. Like the voice, it, it was a mismatch. But anyway, I'm going to read The Body by Stephen King. Oh, and then, um, as you know, I've been reading a lot of short stories. And I do generally like short stories. Um, I, I usually have a collection going. But I got this, which is the, 20, the 2006 Best American Short Stories. And this one is edited by Ann Patchett. So they have a lot of, they had a lot of the old ones and this was like $8. It wasn't much. And um, I just decided to pick it up. I am not reading it now as part of Short Story September. I'm just putting it on the shelf until I kind of go through my collection of short, of short story collections. <laughs> so I start finishing those and I'll go in and get this one. And then my final two are both by the same author. I will be reading this in October. I've already mentioned it on my October pile of possibilities, and that's My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. I have never read Grady Hendrix. I asked people like what Grady Hendrix I should start with, and everyone said My Best Friend's Exorcism, so I have that. I also have the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slang Vampires on audio, um, so I may listen to that in October. I don't know. And then the other one I have is also by Grady Hendrix, but I am not reading it in October, and that is Horror Store. The FOMO Book Club, which I have decided that I am going to participate with, is going to be reading Horror Store. This is the sort of book I don't want to read a digital copy. I want a hard copy of it. And um, they had it at Powell's. Not on sale. I paid full price, which was like $17. So Horror Store. So that is uh, all 24 books that I brought into my house this week. So too many. I hope next month's um, are going to, the, the video is going to be shorter. This is actually two videos because I had to break to make a pediatrician appointment. Um, <laughs> but uh, I do know of at least three pre-orders are coming in. So I have Jhumpa Lahiri's Roman Stories will be coming in, in October. And then I have the 2023 Best American Short Stories and Best American Mystery and Suspense Stories coming in. I pre-ordered those. So because... I've decided that I like those collections. Anyway, that is it, finally. If, if you made it through this, you deserve a medal. I am ashamed at how long this video is. Um, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel. If you haven't already, please join my Discord. The information is down below where we can chat a little bit more. It's a little easier to have like conversations in Discord than it is in comments. Um, so go ahead and join us down there. And thank you very much for sticking with me and I'll see you next time. Bye.